Great. Thank you very much, Greg. And it's really nice to be here representing uh, our Castle Moon team um, and, uh, and all the individuals involved in our Castle Moon team from a number of universities. Uh, well, what I'd like to really emphasize first is the lead university for Casa Moon is the University of New Mexico. And this is a minority serving university. It's in a state which is a minority majority university and or min a minority majority state. And, uh, and many of our students uh, are first generation students going to college. So getting a Casa Moon, getting Casa Moon funded and a survey node is not only important to our science group, but is incredibly important to the University of New Mexico and incredibly important to the state of New Mexico. The emphasis of Casa Moon is on, uh, it's a multi, it diverse multi-generational state team that focuses upon sample measurements, both very sophisticated sample measurements and very fundamental sample measurements. And also in addition to integrate these with a variety of other types of measurements, experimental studies, remotely collected data, modeling, thermodynamic data that we'll be generating to better understand the overall evolution of the moon and ex to explore resources. Uh, we have in our program have set up uh, science training programs, primarily focusing on sample science training programs. We're reaching out uh, just to the, the New Mexico underrepresented communities through sample internship programs, you know, where they come into the University of New Mexico and they eventually, after getting an undergraduate degree or during their undergraduate degree, go and do internships at some of these fabulous labs that are offered by our partners at Lawrence Livermore at the, or the Johnson Space Center. And again, you know, it seems like an obvious step for survey to take that we have a sample science, sample return node during the time that Artemis is going to be bringing samples back. So it's, it seems like uh, a great opportunity uh, all around. Oops. Uh, we have five tasks. The other groups had three tasks. Uh, uh, and this just lists the tasks and the individuals who are the team leads for each of those tasks. Task one is uh, understanding the origin and evolution and chronology of the lunar crust. And again, remember, this is a, a multidisciplinary attack that we're really looking at the evolution of the, the ancient lunar crust and therefore the evolution of the primordial differentiation event. Uh, and this is led by Lars Borg at Lawrence Livermore and Steve Simon. Uh, task two is shaping the lunar crust with impact processes. And this is led by Noah Petro and Nicole Zellner. And again, as, as I will, you'll constantly see that these are task leads are essentially individuals who bring science perspective and another perspective, often uh, an orbital remote sensing perspective. And that's the case here. Uh, evolution of the, the, of the lunar mantle, which we are looking at uh, some of the oldest uh, basalts on the surface of the moon, those that are on the order of 4 billion years or older in utilizing these into understanding the evolution and the nature of the lunar mantle at that time. So it gives us a snapshot when so many other processes and other things are happening on the surface of the moon. Uh, we also have a program or tasks that we're looking at the origin evolution and ISRU capabilities of primordial lunar volatile reservoirs. And this is being led by Lisa Gaddis at the LPI and Justin Simon. And finally, an overall task that focuses upon preparing for sample return from the moon by Artemis and the ro and robotic and follow on robotic missions. And this is led by Francis McCubbin at the Johnson Space Center and by me. Uh, just 
I'm just going to go through three of these tasks because I don't really have time to go through each task in great detail. Again, many of you know that uh, you know we want to use a chronometer to get a, a good understanding of what the age of a particular event on the moon is or a particular lithology on the moon. But getting one number is really meaningless. And that the approach that we have started using over the last few years and that we will be applying to this program is to essentially utilizing multiple chronometers and multiple fundamental measurements such as fundamental petrology, mineralogy, geochemistry, and combining these, which will give us an opportunity to better interpret what that one number means or multiple numbers mean. Um, and so we're using that approach to determine the age constraints of the formation of the ancient crust. You know, what is the age of the Farina northocytes? Does it vary? What is the age of things like the magnesium sweet rocks? Another supposedly post-lunar magma ocean lithology making up the lunar crust. Uh, we're going to be determining the ages of the earliest crust formation, and therefore this provides evidence for what was the duration, what is the age of the lunar magma ocean. Some of the work we've previously done suggests it's fairly young. And then finally, we're going to be looking at, again, isotopic chronology and other types of measurements uh, to better understand and define the compositional variation we see in the ancient lunar crust and its origin. Is it a result, are some of these lithologies a product of lunar magma ocean cumulative overturn or, or the lunar magma ocean, or are they represent uh, periods of melting post lunar magma ocean? Uh, Task four that we're going to look at, it goes from how do the, or, what is the origin of indigenous lunar volatiles during accretion and lunar magma ocean or primordial differentiation processes. And we're utilizing a variety of methodologies here, ranging from determining fundamental uh, thermodynamic process or uh, characteristics, uh, using experimental petrology and applying this to a wide range of stable isotope uh, measurements on some of the lunar rocks to give us a very good understanding of what elements and what state what stable isotopes fractionate during lunar magma ocean crystallization, which other ones essentially are lost during uh, the lunar magma ocean uh, primordial event. We're also focusing upon uh, volatile behavior during eruption at the lunar surface and the distribution of volatiles during eruption. And our main focus will be on uh, the core at Shorty Crater 74001, 74002. And this will provide us with, again, a stable isotope volatile element perspective during the eruption of that one or multiple phases of Mario basalt eruptions. And then finally, we also have a multidisciplinary undergraduate assessment of resource utilization. And this involves during the summer and during the academic year, uh, students from engineering, from biology, from earth science, from material science, essentially involved in looking at how particular uh, resources on the moon, including just regolith, can be used for a wide range of, of uh, activities or support a wide range of activities on the surface of the moon. Then finally, preparing for sample return from the moon by Artemis and, ro and robotic missions. This, this illustrates this only a few of the uh, the subtasks that we're going to be working on, one is utilizing, let me see if this works, is utilizing XCT imaging on some of these large Apollo lunar breccias to essentially find new lunar lithologies and make them available to the community. 
the one the XR the XCT image that you're seeing right now is a small little breccia, and you can see there are other little clasts in there which have never been identified on the moon before. Also, we're planning starting uh, the spring of this year having a virtual sample science symposium. We are working and will be working with uh, robotics on robotic sample return science and technology workshops. And then finally, over the five year period of time that we're being funded, we will move ahead with a planetary materials initiative, which will replace this planetary materials book that you see right in the far right corner. Uh, which was produced in 1998, so it needs to be updated. This represents our team, uh, rep representatives from Albion College, uh, Brown University, Goddard Space Flight Center, the Johnson Space Center, Lawrence Livermore National Labs, uh, the LPI, University of Colorado, uh, of course, the University of New Mexico, uh, and then we have a number of international partners from Australian National University, Curtin University, University of Copenhagen, the University of Western Ontario, and the Autonomous University at Barcelona. What's important is one, that these are all great scientists bringing a variety of different perspectives to the team, but also these scientists bring some of the most outstanding analytical labs for analyzing planetary samples, not only in the United States, but in the world, and turning out world-class data that can be applied to many of the problems outlined in the previous four presentations. With regards to our inclusion plan, uh, this is being led by uh, two individuals shown here from Albion College, uh, Carrie Menno and Nicole Zellner. And we're establishing a positive work environment. That's the first thing. So everybody, including students, have a positive environment to work on. We're building a uh, IDEA uh, capacity and training future leadership workshops, creating pathways for retention of planetary sciences. Uh, we have a K through 12 school program uh, in the Michigan area and in the Albuquerque area. And we have a fairly large professional development opportunities. And this is outreaching to our various labs of, of again, world-class capabilities and taking students from working in our meteorite museum, which is shown here, uh, on a very low level, and then providing them with opportunities for internships in the junior and senior years in other internships and, and employment opportunities in the future at many of the national labs that are our partners. And then finally, as I mentioned, we'll have a series of citizen scientists sample investigations in which we'll take some of these XCT imaging and put them online and have individual student uh, citizen scientists actually do science with us and for us. In the case that I showed, this is looking at volcanic glass beads, determining size, shape, uh, crystallinity. So, there, so individual people throughout the community, throughout the world are involved in doing science from the moon. Thank you.